Hey, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to be unboxing the X-Tool Compact M1 10 watt laser cutter and engraving machine. I'll throw the uh, full list of what I ordered as far as attachments and accessories go up on the screen. But we are going to start with the main unit itself. Some of these boxes have a little bit of damage on them, so I'm going to get some pictures of that. Anytime you guys order an expensive machine like this and the boxes look damaged, definitely document it, take pictures. I'm guessing everything's going to be fine inside, but can't hurt to be too safe. All right, let's get started. So you can see there's a warning right on there saying, Be careful if you're using a blade to open the box. You can damage the stuff inside. So we're gonna go ahead and use a box cutter. I'm gonna play it safe with my box cutter here. I'm actually only gonna bring it out just a little bit so I can't even reach anything inside, just enough to break the tape. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Just a bunch of samples of what you can do. That's pretty encouraging. It's a nice first thing to see. All sorts of decorations, laser engraved coasters here and trivets. Looks like a phone case here made out of wood. Got an engraved rolling pin. This does include, or sorry, I didn't purchase it, but you can purchase as an attachment this rotary tool that goes underneath it. You're going to need to also purchase the honeycomb tray and rising kit if you're going to do that. I did get the riser kit and the tray, but I'm not really going to explore engraving round items at this time, so I'm really more interested in the cutting abilities. Alright, this thing is packed really, really well. Wow, very well. Here, we'll lean you forward. Check that out, it's got its own foam cage. Nice and snug in there. Alright, this thing is, looks like, shrink wrapped pretty good. Let's get that out. We lift the lid and we get more foam. Very safe. Let's see what's inside. This is like a little box in itself. Okay, cool. So there's like this foam chest in here that fills the chamber. And then that has its own chamber where it looks like all the documentation and the instructions I assume are gonna be. That's cool. Well, thank you from the company. I ordered directly from Xtool. Uh, I would recommend you guys too as well. They offer some uh, long-term services, maintenance, like protections, that kind of thing. Cool, so yeah, that's our user manual. We will be digging through that later when we make our test cuts. Looks like we have some, uh, what is this? Oh, we've got some simple materials here. We'll have to look through and uh, figure out what each of these are and label them as I go here. So we got this. Got 
this juice. Alright, we have our main power cord. Looks like we have our USB cable. It's going to let our computer talk to this thing via wire. You can also connect wirelessly. Ah, cool. This is a compressed hose. This is going to be our exhaust system. So if I choose, I can run this exhaust either into one of the uh, smoke canceling accessories that comes with it, or I can just run it right out a window. I didn't get the air purifier thingy, smoke collector thing that comes with it. Uh, I figured I would likely just exhaust out a window since I'm probably going to be cutting a lot whenever I do cut. We got additional hardware in here. See we got a little hose clamp. That's cool. Um, I bought these replacement blades just because I knew I was going to have to eventually. I am planning on figuring out how to get this thing to uh, cut with the blade included rather than the laser function. You can do a bunch of different stuff like vinyl cutting with it. So I'm looking forward to figuring out how to do that. I'll put that in there for now. The rest of the power cable, kind of like a laptop charger. Uh, mystery group that I don't recognize at this moment, but we'll let you know what it is below. Tang Shang probably has a different name. This little connector is to mount the hose to the machine itself. And then you can run it either into the filter machine or out a window. These I believe are the little pins for the honeycomb tray that I bought. Um, they're supposed to be magnetic and pretty useful for holding the workpiece. That for now. All right, let's move it along. More foam. Whoa. All right. Wow, this thing is packed so well. I'm very happy with it. All right. So inside we got more stuff in the chamber here below the foam. Uh, these, I guess they just call them triangular prisms. Uh, they're little triangular pieces that run lengthwise and they're for putting your work on. Um, these, I'm not sure how often I'll need them because I got the honeycomb tray as well, but good to have. These are made of metal. I'm guessing they are somehow impervious to the laser. gripping pad for it and looks like we got a spare one of these underneath as well take you guys inside all right this is what we got going on you can see the uh, cutting head here laser cutting head, um, a little blade mounts underneath that's going to let you do your blade cutting as well. You can see these tracks here that move that piece are pretty heavy duty. Look like tank treads. All right. One of the reasons I got this is uh, having a small child now, it, I kind of put value on having this be a completely enclosed system. Um, you know you don't need to look from a certain angle or um, worry about people <laughs> wrecking their eyes looking at the laser. What I'm going to do uh, before I move on is I'm going to turn this thing around and show you the back of it. So this part's super easy. You just take these thumb screws that I just showed you and use them to attach the bracket to the little exhaust port on the back of the machine. Uh, really, really quick and easy.
Now I'm just taking that hose clamp that they included and attaching it to the back of the machine. Here is the riser base that will accept the honeycomb tray that I got. It doesn't really fasten together. These two pieces just kind of sit there and then these acrylic shields um, that guard your eyes from the light from the laser, they go in between. There are these little slots on the ends of both pieces that receive them and then you can see the divots uh, on these white pieces will accept the upper part of the machine like the main laser box kind of fits on there. It's got little feet that click in there perfectly. Cool, so here is my laser workstation. You can see the machine all set up on the riser. The exhaust hose is going out one of the windows in my garage. And I've dedicated a lot of space to this setup. But there's one spot in my shop that deserves a good setup. It's this. This is by far my most expensive piece of equipment at the moment. And I plan to do a lot of work with it and hopefully allow our company to offer some different items in the future. All right, I think it's time for some test cuts. So I'm gonna grab this file. It's actually a file that came in the software for like a gear. Um, I modified it so that it would cut without leaving this tiny little line on the edge. Um, so. Here I am, just throwing it on some cherry. The cherry is about, I think it's eight millimeter, it might be 10 millimeter this time. Um, but we're gonna try, uh, I think three passes at five millimeters a second. We're gonna see how that goes. Well, once you got your image, it's really easy to copy and paste another one. Uh, you can also use the array feature, which will line them up for you automatically in the software. So I'm just gonna throw a couple of these on a piece of cherry and hit the old play button. See what happens. So it's actually really difficult to film this thing working because it's enclosed. You know, it's a very safe machine and it's got this protective uh, plexiglass on the top that kind of shades everything. So um, I didn't like the shots that I got of those three gears. So I actually ran another one and dialed in the settings a little bit. So you'll see that next. You can see these first three that I ran were so close to coming uh, coming through the other side really clean. Like they almost just dropped through. So they probably needed maybe one less speed, one more power. Um, it was really close. So you can see some splinters on them. But check out this next one that I run after I dial in the settings. Got some. All right, so we dialed that burn in a little bit and we're gonna run it again and I'm gonna film it better this time. Um, yeah, it's not too easy to see in there, and I can only get so close with the camera, but yeah, check this thing out, man. It just cuts through like butter. This is cherry. Cherry is known for burning and engraving, or uh, cutting and engraving pretty well, but this thing is powerful. Here you can see it completing the first pass of the cut. It's gonna run two more. Um, I could probably get through with one pass or two pass, but there's gonna be scorching because we don't have that air assist module in yet. All right, job's complete in two minutes, four seconds. Let's open this bad guy up. Hopefully this is all the way through. Oh yeah. Wow. Look at that. Put that down for now. Let's check out the gear. Wow. Sometimes you gotta persuade these to uh, separate, but I guess that one's dialed in. That might be a little more power than we need even. Probably get this done even faster than the two minutes and four seconds, but there you go. That is uh, eight millimeters, if you're wondering, for an exact thickness. I'm gonna leave you guys with some shots of some other stuff I was experimenting with. Uh, it came with these keychains. I got those in my other little bonus materials pack. You'll see more of those later, I'm sure, as I do more videos. And I've been messing around with this little animal puzzle here, just trying to get some engraves and cuts in the same file. Maybe I'll put little dowels in. Who knows?
Uh, that's all for now. Hey, do me a favor, like this video if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button to see more cool stuff like this in the future. Take it easy.